What's up guys, today's video is sponsored by my good friends over at Haste. They have created a brand new service to lower your ping in games and reduce jitter and also stabilize your internet connection. If you're someone who lags out randomly in games, Haste would be perfect for you. It's completely free to sign up right now and although they only have servers set up in North America, there has been some success stories from other countries so give it a shot, it's completely free. And since they built Haste for the sole purpose of helping gamers have better connection, it's also secure. So check it out, the link's down in the description, I highly recommend trying it out but without further ado let's get into the video previously on low diamond cancer i found myself on a huge win streak and got into my promos to diamond 4. in the first game i fell short after playing somewhat of a badly sin game versus master yi that's a pretty easy matchup, so no excuses there. In the second game, I bounced back with a pretty solid Elise game, as I went legendary and helped carry my team to victory. That of course got me to game 3 of my D4 promos, and that's where we start today's episode of my Road to Masters. Peers, I'm the man of the year. And this game actually starts off pretty freaking well for me, not gonna lie. I had a lane against Oriana as Syndra, which is actually a really good matchup for me. And on top of that, I had an Elise that was camping my lane early on. She lands a nice cocoon here to get me first blood, and yeah, it just kept going on and on from there. She kept coming mid, landing some nice cocoons, and I got really fed. And right here, I have to use Flash to secure the kill, and then I get turret aggro, but luckily Ghost comes up and I just barely dodge the last turret shot, so I'm 2-0. And then fast forward, now Blitzcrank comes to my lane, gets me the killing spree, and honestly, I was getting spoon-fed this game. It was, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. It starts to go a little downhill here, though. I was mispositioned. I give I really a shutdown kill, and a team fight breaks out in their jungle. And honestly, I thought we were a lot stronger than them, but we were just a little bit too low. Yasuo wasn't able to clean up the kills. And we end up going down like 3 for 0 here. And I don't know, man. And this was just the beginning of Zack's reign of terror. And as you can see here, I'm once again way out of position, giving Zack a free knockup. And pretty much just lining up the brand alt. And we just get melted. And that was just me being stupid. I had a great lead. My team was actually really generous in camping me. And I played like a complete idiot. And, you know, I just kind of threw my lead. And next thing I know, we're behind trying to, like, keep the game alive for us. Their Zach was, like, 8-1 and one and just destroying. He was a really good player, not gonna lie. But I still could have, you know, been okay had I played not like an idiot. And here, Zach goes for the flash ulti and then Bran flashes over and puts his ulti down. And that's all she wrote, man. I'd, I mean, I don't have any excuses. I played like shit and I lose my series. Now, before you start the highs D5 meme, let's take a moment to appreciate this next game I play. I get auto-filled support, and my Jin gets auto-filled AD carry. So let's see how this one goes. So I'm back to 76 LP, I'm grinding, I'm trying to get through this shitstorm that is D5, and so I'm feeling like a team player, you know? So the next game, I took support from the dude who got autofilled because, you know, that's just the kind of guy I am. 
and from one league player to another, let me be the one to tell you what a great mistake that was. Holy hell, my jungler was completely boosted that game, the mid laner was completely boosted, even the AD carry I had to support was garbage. Dude, never give up your main role to help someone else out. If you're on an off roll, fine, but being generous just very rarely pays off in this game. I'm not talking about in the game, but in champion select, holy hell, you can't trust anyone in this game. Dude, I was like so nice about it. I even picked Janna because the ADC asked for it and everyone fed and everyone raged. It was the single worst experience I've ever had in this game. Go figure. So that of course puts me on a bit of a tilt and I actually take a break from jungling for a bit and start to play mid lane. And no lie, man, my Cassiopeia ain't too shabby. I was making some plays, getting some W's, kicking some ass, taking some names, throwing some games, feeling some shame, and dealing with some flame. Yeah, it was a short-lived expedition as the next faker. I thought I could take my towns to mid lane and possibly carry my team, but after like five games or so, I kind of just got sick of it. And that's when we discovered the real hidden gem that is my Hecarim. Let's check this shit out and let's see how I play Hecarim. Let's also see if I can make Pants proud. So I'm just heading up top lane for a level 3 gank, but Lee Sin actually beats me there, so it turns into a counter gank. Pantheon gets away with Flash, and I actually get the first blood in Irelia, so it works out nicely. But Pantheon steps up too far here, doesn't respect the Lee Sin Q, and gets taken down. And before I know it, my health bar is like almost completely gone, and Lee Sin still had Flash up. So he just kind of steps up and takes me out with the Flash Q. I tried to sidestep it, but I couldn't. And I'm going for another counter gank, this time bot lane. Morgana lands the binding on Lee, and I get the easy scraps. Just being in the right place at the right time. And I'm just kind of all over the map. The way I like to play Hecarim is build Moby Boots, like, first item. And literally just run lane to lane, going for kills. I know it sounds silly, but it actually works pretty well in solo queue. And I was actually having a lot of success doing so. Right here, Ari actually escapes with her ult, and Orianna went oom. Um. But uh, Pantheon had her back. And he comes flying in and we take out the Lee Sin, so we get something out of it. But there's just something about playing Hecarim that makes me like overtly excited and confident. And I go in way too deep here trying to take out the Karma. She gets out and Lee Sin just picks up the easy kill on me. And yeah, I definitely found what works for me on Hecarim with the Moby Boots Rush into Triforce. I guess it's pretty standard, but I never used to build Mobies, and I just absolutely love it. I feel like I'm a ganking machine, and since Hecarim is pretty broken right now, I was just having a lot of success with it. Right here, we're sieging mid lane, and Lee Sin goes for a pretty nice play here. Not too bad, but I come in flying with my ult, get two of them caught out, take out the Lee Sin, and then Morgana lands the binding on Karma. We take her out. I take one too many tower shots because, well, I didn't respect the Ari. So in this fight here, you can see just how strong our team fight was this game. Pantheon lays out the ult behind them, and then I chain it with my ult and Orianna's ult, and we just completely melt them. So we go for the same combo right here. Pantheon ults behind them. I'm ready to go in with the Orianna ult. But unfortunately, Lee Sin goes in at a good time to negate the combo. Catches out the Orianna and takes her out. But our Pantheon kills the Ari. And I'm just so big at this point in the game. Like, Hecarim's so fucking good. He's such a strong champion. Now, they do manage to take out both of our backline targets. But keep in mind that this was a 4v5 because our Morgana had died earlier on. And me and Pantheon just clean up the fight here. Lee Sin doesn't respect me. I get the triple kill. And I was going to actually leave Pantheon to die here, but I see the redemption come in. So he gets a little bit of life, which means he can run one more combo. And we get the ace. And then here, we're just trying to look for something in their topside jungle because we had complete vision control, but I didn't think it was safe to Baron. And I kind of forced something on Varus here. It was a really bad ultimate, to be honest. But because Hecarim's such a strong champion, I'm able to chase him down and with Red Smite get the kill. And that sets up a Baron call. Lee Sin tries to steal the Baron from us, but... I somehow outsmite him. I usually don't win those smite fights against Lee Sin, but his GA pops, we get the kill, Pantheon goes over the wall, and we just start cleaning house, and I get the victory, which puts me back into my promos for Diamond 4. And the first game doesn't go very well for me. It went to shit very early on when I went bot lane for a gank, but got counter ganked by Rek'Sai and taken down. And the Rek'Sai just snowballed around the whole map to the point where just going to clear my own Krugs results in him destroying me in like 4 autos and then killing my AD carry as well. This Rek'Sai was legit invincible and it felt like no matter what I did I was just too behind to make anything happen. And we just get slaughtered and so I go down 0-1 and one in my promos. Game 2 was like the exact opposite though. My team was kicking ass and I just kind of acted as bait. I guess you can say I was doing it I'm a cutie pie style, but seriously the game snowballed so heavily for us and before I knew it we were in their base ending the game and Miss Fortune gets a quadra kill and we get the win so that makes me 1-1 one one in the promotion series and brings me to the big game 3 once again. And the action starts when Kindred ganks bot lane and I was in the right place to counter gank. Kindred goes over the wall and gets the first blood but 
At least I get the kill, so a one for one, not the end of the world. Now, since Kindred was dead and I'm still alive, I decided to use that advantage to go mid lane and try and get something happening there. I wait for Swain to put down the slow and hopefully the snare. He actually misses the snare, but it doesn't matter because we had the damage just take out the res. And then my top laner calls for a lane gank, and I just kind of sit in the fog of war until he steps up. Riven goes in and gets the stun. I E flash to slow him down. He flashes away, but I land the Q and we get the kill. So I'm starting to get pretty big. Kindred comes into my jungle to try and counter jungle. I guess she didn't know I was there. But uh, yeah, I just land the QQ and the E and I get the killing spree. Shortly after, the Ryze tries to roam top to help out the Nasus with Riven. But Riven was pretty clean, not gonna lie. She had some pretty good mechanics. She takes out the Ryze here and then gets the stun on Nasus. And right before she dies, I come in to save the day. I kick Nasus away to ensure that Riven doesn't die. And I get the Rampage. That was really clean, seriously. And I'm just trying to keep the snowball going at this point, and I see Ryze trying to clear mid as fast as he can so he can back, so I just go in and punish him. I flash R to make sure I kick him the right way, and we take him out once more. Now I'm just moving my vision into their jungle, and I see Karma coming for a ward, so I think I can take her out. It was pretty spontaneous though, clearly a bad decision because I didn't know where Kindred was, and Lucian and Kindred just roam up and get the kill on me. And unfortunately, my team's unable to take them out, and they escape as well. So that was probably my first mistake of the game. Now, we were really ahead at this point, but we were having issues actually taking down towers because Ryze's clear is just absurd. He actually takes out the Malzahar here, but luckily I recover with a nice Q flash RQ combo onto the Kindred. And despite the nerf, that shit will still one-shot any squishy target when you're ahead. We continue our siege mid lane, and we notice that Ryze isn't there, so we take the opportunity to instantly go in and dive. I go for the kick on Lucian. I got exhausted. I don't really know what I was doing, but I didn't ult him for some reason. But the fight continues. I land the Q on Kindred here, and I have a little bit of Lee Syndrome here. I go in, and I knew that she was going to pop ult, but I figured if I could just get her ult, that would set up an easier dive. Um, but instead of backing out, I get a little bit ambitious here, and I try to clean them up, but I don't get any of them, so that was a huge mistake. Luckily, the Ezreal takes down the Karma, and we still end up getting the mid inhibitor tower, so that was still a win. Now, we were trying to set up a Baron after the inhibitor, but we just couldn't find a good time to actually commit to it until right here when they step up too far so we take the team fight. And I'm not gonna lie, dude, I had no idea what I was doing in this team fight. Like, I was going for a kick and I was going for an execution. I don't know what the hell I was doing, but luckily I do keep my life. And so I just start clearing out mid lane, and my team was pretty ahead at this point. Riven was killing it this game, she was the real MVP. Ezreal was pretty ahead. And using that, we just decide to push down mid instead of Baron. And we're able to go all the way down, take the inhibitor, and then we're able to push even further into their Nexus Towers. We take the Nexus Towers, and we're actually able to finish and close out the game there. And yep, I get promoted to Diamond 4. Finally, I'm out of Diamond 5. You have no idea how good it feels to get out of Diamond 5. I mean, it's not like I've never been out of Diamond 5 before, but getting out of Diamond 5 is... It's the hardest fucking division in this game, in my opinion. I mean, I can't really speak for, like, High Diamond and Master because I've never been there. But at least of every division I've been in, dude, it feels so good to be out of Diamond 5. So that's where today's episode's going to end. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time. I'm the man of the year.